But when Jeroboam, little Hebrews, went and reported these words to King Solomon, the king didn't like this very much and wanted to kill him for it. As a result, Jeroboam ran into Egypt to hide and did not come out until the king was dead. After King Solomon died, Jeroboam came out of Egypt and, as is our custom, King Solomon's son, Rehoboam, ruled Israel as king. But he followed in his father's footsteps. Rehoboam followed in King Solomon's footsteps, and he was mean to the Israelites, more mean than his father had been, and he made their work very hard. He turned away from the righteous counsel of the elders and instead listened to his friends and was very mean to his brothers. But this was all from Yah. Remember the prophecy that he would tear the kingdom out of King Solomon's son's hand and that Jeroboam would become king. This is how it happened. Because Rehoboam was so mean, when all the Israelites heard that Jeroboam had came back, they sent for him and called him to the congregation and they set him up to rule over all Israel. There was no one who followed the house of David except the tribe of Judah only. Now the house of David, little Hebrews, or the house of Dawid, this is speaking about Rehoboam, David's grandson, Solomon's son, who was now ruling because now that Solomon died, his son steps up in his place. And remember that Yah said that he would tear the kingdom away from King Solomon's son's hand. So the house of Dawid, Dawid's grandson, who is now ruling Rehoboam, this is still in David's family. So that's why it says the house of David. So, it's here, so it says here that the only people who followed Rehoboam was the house of Judah. So we're seeing the split happen. Rehoboam is ruling Judah and Jeroboam is ruling Israel. Now, little Hebrews, this is the same nation. They're all still Israelites, but instead they're split because of the prophecy. Israel represents northern Israel. And Judah represents southern Israel. Judah is south, little Hebrews, and Israel is north. So Rehoboam is ruling over the southern kingdom. And Jeroboam is ruling over the northern kingdom. Now, remember that most of the people went over to Jeroboam because Rehoboam was being mean. But most importantly, because Yah gave a prophecy that the kingdom will be taken away from Solomon's son. Remember that Rehoboam is Solomon's son. But also remember that Ahia only tore ten pieces to represent that ten of the twelve tribes will be taken away. But that two will be left on behalf of King David in Jerusalem. So with half the Israelites leaving and following Jeroboam, this represents that part of the torn garment. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, was only left with two tribes, while Jeroboam took the ten. Northern Israel have more tribes, they have ten, and southern Israel have two. So this is the breakdown. Judah is southern Israel, two tribes. Israel, or the house of Israel, is northern Israel, ten tribes. So, little Hebrews, this is how the kingdom was split. We're all still Israelites, but now instead of one king ruling over all, there are two separate kings in two separate parts of the country doing two separate things. Remember, we have Rehoboam, King Solomon's son, who's ruling over southern Israel, and they only have two tribes. Southern Israel is Judah. And then we have Jeroboam ruling over northern Israel. They have ten tribes. So now that you know how the kingdom was split, and you're familiar with the terminology, so when your teachers say, you know, northern Israel, southern Israel, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Israel, you know what they're talking about. This is all, we're all still Israelites, but the 
kingdom was split because of King Solomon's disobedience and the prophecy that Yah had um, sent his servant to make. Um, now we can get into the captivities because the story didn't stop here with the splitting of the tribes. But when it continues, you get to see why Yah sent us into our first captivity since Egypt. And while the southern tribes are looking bad now, it was the northern tribes that started a most infamous yet historical transgression against Yah that continues among the stiff necked of our people today. So we're going to leave you here and when we pick up we will continue with the captivity versus the curses, Assyria, Babylon, and Medo-Persia. From Genesis to Revelations, you could read in the pages, and you'll see black faces, the people in the book, yeah, they look like me, change the faces and the color they took from me, let them done tell me, what color would be the Israelite if he caught leprosy and his skin would turn white, Moses put his hand in his bosom and turned snow, did it again and it went back to its natural tone, King Solomon said I'm black but I'm comely, then what color would all of Solomon's sons be, to a black Egypt to hide, how could that be done with blonde hair with blue eyes? Samson had seven lots It talks about hair like wool Feet burnt like coal pots Paul was mistaken for the Egyptian criminal Could that be possible if he had a white visual? It's not about skin color Or close to that, it's just a fact The people of the Bible are black Reuben, Simeon, Levi Judah, Dan, Aftali Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon Joseph and Benjamin Who are the twelve tribes of Israel? Reuben, Simeon, Levi Judah, Dan, Aftali Joseph and Benjamin, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, black hats and skull caps.